Hello everyone, this is Grayshot. Once I bring you another Sue H2 a replay brought to you by I, I really hope it's not for any of these guys, and luckily for me, it wasn't. Thank you, Testy, for submitting your replay. I'm not better, let's let's be honest, Testy, but hey, at least it's not as uh, well, nope. I can't say that name, so with Cuck and Ollie. So man, this is gonna be great. Double check your rankings with Feast, because I'm not definitely not gonna say that. I can literally say, again, that, MILF, and then that. And it was like, God damn it. Like, God, of course. Just, just, just high quality names right here. Not something you would see written on a goddamn restroom bathroom at all. Like, God damn it. But in any case, <laughs> let's move on, shall we? Three Soviet, two OKW, and a Vermok. So thank, uh, once again, thank you. And also his friends, uh, Cuck. And Ollie have also joined, so that'll be interesting. Oh man, Soviet Shock Army! I haven't seen that in forever. Huh, guys? Huh, guys? Haven't seen that in forever. But in any case, uh, moving on. D double checking the ranking again. It looked like, from what I saw, yeah. The, even with all these guys, I think Testy. Yep. The higher the the, the uh, Soviets have a higher ranking, so should at least play time go to them. But we'll see, because I literally had a guy five thousand hours. Play like crap, so we'll see how this goes. Also, quick update. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. Ace, Tim, Leo, uh, Joey, Nick, and Fargo. So thank, thank you guys so much for your awesome support. You guys rock. And in any case, also wanted to give a quick update because, unfortunately, I am recording a lot of CHD replays in a row. Not because of, you know, just like, oh, great shot, you're doing your job. Well, that and also I'm really on the... Uh, my foot's to, my feet are to the fire because right now I'm about to go meet family over the weekend. And what does that mean? Oh, that means that I will have no time whatsoever for replays, recordings, or anything. So I'm literally trying to get everything possibly recorded and done before then. So that way when I come back and, and actually have time... Oh my, don't die. Oh, he might live. Never mind. Um, oh, my poor, poor squad. Uh, I, that I actually can, you know, just jump right into content and kind of go, you know, get everything back to normal because, yeah, I'm going to be definitely, uh, making sure that you guys have, uh, content coming out, which unfortunately is going to, once again, delay know your units. Once, sorry about that, guys. I know you enjoy that show. And I, I swear, it's like once I get that show, not, I have, I actually have the scripts down for a couple episodes now. Like, all, everything's done. I just need to sit down, record, and edit. And unfortunately, I just don't have the time because that show takes actually quite a bit of time to edit uh, but in any case I will that that show will be coming up with the Spitfire will be the next episode but in any case uh, moving on I also want to give a quick update uh, the, the shooting at the YouTube headquarters at least so far things have quieted down uh, four people unfortunately were hurt um, and shot by a shooter that may or may not have ended their own life um, where they're trying to get final details but like I said sewing on final uh, final information before I uh, again go too much on it uh, but I will say once again it's just like I would rather have the facts than say things that are not true such as why the shooter did what they did or anything like that but in any case nice small tough cocktail pushing them out but I will say at least one positive thing is so far there have been no confirmed uh, uh, unfortunately a casualties involving someone dying so at least everyone's in the hospital right now, and, and hopefully they make a full recovery. So that's my hope. But in any case, let's get to, uh, let's take our minds off that and get to this game, shall we? It, it, and by the way, it is YouTube, and I kind of make my money off YouTube. So again, it's, I, I if I see something like that again, it, it it sort of indirectly affects me, but still something that again, it's just like I I, I do want to mention. I I, I have to mention because that's that's just stupid. That is just so incredibly stupid for someone to do that and. Yeah, uh, j that pretty much was, that, that's pretty much my feelings on it. But in any case, Stern Pioneers moving on up. <laughs> Unfortunately, they pushed two squads back. Good for them. They're not going to push this guy back. Volk Squad could, though. They're really low health, and these guys actually have a full health bar with most men. Yeah, those conscripts are going to have to fall back. And unfortunately, it looks like it might probably bite the dust. Volk Squad's pushing on up. Uh, maybe throwing a fire. Might be better just to get SCG-44. Because that'll tear that infantry apart. We can see here that Cuck... God damn it. Uh... I'm gonna have to. Lajon? Lajon. I almost want to say lasagna, but Lajon. Uh, looks like he's uh, going heavy on conscript. Testy is going heavy on conscripts with a 1MG. Interesting little, like, padding you have there on both sides. We have Ollie. Once again, heavy conscript focus. And so far, that seems to be working out decently. You are pushing up quite a bit. Uh, you have at least. 
two of the major command points under your control for now. The, unfortunately, the one on the right is heatly contested, but you're still holding it for the time being. Unfortunately, we do have, uh, I will say MILF, because goddamn, just to make fun of this guy. So MILF is, has a medical building here, so he's going to be able to constantly reinforce these guys pretty quickly. Um, wait, hold on. Huh. Okay, then. Looks like, actually, from this positioning, I, I I would kind of hope you would put it, like, here. It'll be a little bit harder. Because right right here, it's, you can say, oh, gray shot, what's the problem? Uh, the problem I have with this is actually a little thing of just, like, how do I say this in the best way possible? Um, it's kind of open. Like, it's very easy for, like, an S-285 or something to hit this. So that's my concern. At least up on the ridge. If your guys are being attacked, they can get in the heavy cover. Here, they're out in the open. so Or negative cover, which make them easier to, you know, get killed. Uh, Volk Squad's pushing on up with Grenadiers to put, taking that objective. They may try to push on this point from multiple angles, which might be a good idea. Oh, here we go. Storm Officer. So, yeah, it looks like he went breakthrough. And with that, he can actually force a unit to retreat. So, he can force a Concert Squad to retreat. And then, with that, Volk Squad can move in, throw a fire grenade, push out that unit and and or forcing you to retreat if he doesn't do so already so he has that option as well but these guys unfortunately with the pentacle slayers upgraded and boosted by the storm officer you can see here inspired to fight harder we'll do quite a number well yeah quite a bit on those conscripts which don't exactly have a high defense rate they're still decent but against those rifles they just can't stand up to it long range so it looks like conscripts being pushed back in mid yeah, the Vermont player is just reinforcing this objective, putting bunkers down. Middle should be very hard for the Soviets to really take that without some heavy support weaponry involving mortars, which they have. <laughs> like, let's not denounce it. They have the, the equipment, but that being said, this guy's on the right-hand side. So right now we're looking at... Oh, God damn it. <sighs> By the way, I know... I, I, wonder, I wonder if he was... This is probably like a joke account. But uh, for almost, I thought it was Fest. But I'm like, no, it's Feast. Yeah, he's, he's definitely playing that up. Anyway, Storm Pioneers are taking the bottom area. We have Conscripts come down in mass, which Storm Pioneers are going to have to retreat from. These guys have some units on defensive, but once again, I find it weird that this MG is in place behind the heavier cover. Maybe he's just trying to make sure he can't be flanked as easy, but once again, heavy cover would make that thing survive a bit longer. Um, Volk Squad's pulling on back. On the right, we have Storm Officer moving on up, but we have two squads of infantry with, well, PPSHs, so that's going to really tear him apart if he tries to move on up. Oh, my conscripts being pushed back over here. You went with what exactly? Guard Mortar Coordination. Okay. So, what does that bring? So, that heavy mortar and uh, heavier infantry involving with fighting tanks. Again, the uh, kind of like a... A stop that you can do with the penal troops of buttoning it does help allowing for let's say penals rushing on up or something like that, something along that way to do a lot of damage nice support gun hit but unfortunately multiple cocktails kind of burned out the mg but that being said he threw his own incendiary so everyone's on fire now and uh pushed back the conscripts unfortunately for him though there's more conscripts coming around the corner so yeah that's gonna be a big problem it's gonna be a big problem with all these forces coming on up uh most likely the con these forces should be able to hold the point and recapture the, the southern point for a, a small portion of time. Once he gets the, yep, I was going to say, once he gets healed up and also additional armor, he should be able to take it back. Unfortunately for um, Testy, he's being pushed back. We have a Luke's that's very good against infantry. Do you have AT grenades? Unfortunately, let's double check. You do not. So right now you have no anti-armor. You can say, oh, great shot. It's a half track. Yeah, but unfortunately, even with its main gun, it's not going to do all that much against that tank, which, by the way, really like the skin on that. That looks really cool. You know, actually it reminds me of, I don't know if anyone would get the idea of this. This is just me as a kid and like what, like, for example, like your mind's work in a really interesting ways. For the fact, like when you think of color or something like that, you automatically think of a certain thing that hits you in your life. Mine was, um, one of my family members worked in a bank for a long time. So every time, so that color like pattern is similar to those like swirling lollipops you would get it's not and i'm not talking about like the the like the little ones with different flavor kind i'm talking about the one with like the blue swirl on it and also i think there's a red swirl and an orange swirl it's like and they weren't circles uh they were like shaped like uh, giant quarters like the lollipops not the ones where like it literally looks like a globe or something I, I, but in any case that's what it reminds me of and every time i would go there i'd make sure i grab one because of course i'm a kid 
And if you give me free candy, by God, I'm taking that candy. Anyway, certain pioneers rolling up, taking everything down. God, I, I was the kid during Halloween who would be like, okay, this is the candy I got. What do you got to trade? I don't like these because they have nuts in them. What do you give me? I want I want three of those. I want two of those. We're going to switch. They'll be good. All right. And I try to get the best deal possible. That, that was my, oh my always my objective. In any case, we have a uh, MG34 rolling up along with folk squads and a half tracks. So most likely, they're going to be able to lock down this territory. Oh, wait. Oh, no. AT grenades. Oh, this one got suppressed. Only one got thrown. Uh, they don't have enough. They don't have enough. Unfortunately, being suppressed as well. They're just going to have to fall back. Right now, they're just being murdered. So, you're just giving that thing veterancy. Yeah, pull back. Grand Ears are like, maybe we should help. And then they're like, nah, they got it. Uh, conscripts need to pull the heck back because uh, that thing will tear them apart. And also, the Stern Pioneer shouldn't be too far behind. Oh, nope. He doesn't have the retreat point there yet. He has to go all the way back to Vey. So it will be a little bit, but they'll be able to get that half trap prepared in no time. Meanwhile, once again, Testy's on playing very defensive here. Love the play right now going on. Again, use the environment to your advantage. A AT gun. Try and open fire here, but once again, Fog of War. Guess what's the problem? The goddamn hay barrel. It can't. You can't see it. You can't shoot it. And now this guy can just use the hay barrels to his advantage. Or just get shot in the face. Also, if you were really that low, you should have just retreated. <laughs> But anyway, I was going to say he could have fallen back and used the other one instead of going right, but whatever. <sighs> Initially, good idea. After that, once you see him go around, maybe this way as well, kind of go loop de loop That could be very good. I know you have to worry about these guys with AT, but I'm just saying, like, you needed to get out of there a lot sooner. But nice idea about using that to block yourself and try to get out of there in the nick of time. In any case, what do we have going on right now? So let's see. So far, MILF hasn't picked anything yet, but Feast has picked Spirit Doctrine, so nice recon abilities, mortars, which I'm assuming he, nope, he doesn't have. He has a lot of Grand Deers, which is definitely going to be a problem for medium range against Conscripts, because they shred him with the LMGs. Man, so many Molotov Cocktails, which, fun fact, if you say the Molotov Cocktail was made in Russia, you are dead wrong. Molotov Cocktail was made and used by the Finns. Yeah, the you can thank the Finns for that little invention. Uh, and where did they end up using these contraptions? Oh, it was uh, during the uh, the the Finnish-Soviet War that happened around the time that World War II was uh, kicking off. So, yeah, fun fact about that. Also, one of the biggest military blunders, that war for the Russians. Holy mackerel. You can th kind of like how Greece kind of like helped delay the, the Germans from invading Russia the that war showed the, the germans like oh shit we should invade them because they suck <laughs> but in any case um so we have a maxim over here trying to defend the point the looks like the bunker got taken out but they still have a command point uh post oh, oh, sorry not command a medical building here so they can heal they might be making a command post back here i'm assuming they are because that, otherwise that would be a terrible bunker mg placement Mortar, at least it, when not under fire, can at least heal and it can counter. Unfortunately, with the heavier mortars that I think they have, along with the normal mortars, that mortar's going to have a bit of a tough time. I can counter barrage, though, so that's positive. But we'll see how things go. Right now on the left, we have more conscript spam going on. Let's see, we have an SU-76 on standby, but I'm not seeing a lot of targets can really hit. He's keeping his infantry at a good distance away from the half-track, so that's unfortunately going to make sure that the... Um, SU-76 can't get close enough without risking major involvement. Nice mine placement, at least by the way, so if they do come up here, they'll be slowed down. Nice job covering your flank. But overall, it looks like the allies are just having a hard time reversing the axis. Axis, nice. Okay, yeah, nice blob over here. Um, you can tell that he's moving them individually, so that's good. And he's trying to get around the MGs, also a good idea. You have a Maxim over here, and you have another Maxim over here. He's throwing some grenades to tear that thing apart. The Pentacle Slayer grenades, uh, grenades are not amazing, but they'll do the work. They're not, they are not—they don't have the explosive powers of Bundle Grenade, but heck, they'll, they'll still do a decent amount of damage. But in any case, uh, it's like I always think of their things as secondary. Like their AT grenade is just like secondary to like a Panzerfaust, which I think is always better. Just because of that thing, it's just, eh, it's just like, it's there. It's still effective, especially if you want to cripple a tank. Speaking of tanks, we have a Panzer IV in mid. Awesome. 
backed up by grenadiers this thing could really punch through the line right now and break up a lot of soviet forces which is exactly what it's doing equipped with an mg42 it seems to be pushing them back quite quite well um, unfortunately though we have uh, some reinforcements coming in for the germans and that involves some uh, penal not penal goddamn guard troops and conscripts no et grenades though no et grenades we do have a marked target he can use which is Right now you look. Right now you have 460 munitions. I know you could say great shot. That'd be a waste. No, that would be scare tactics. That would be like, oh shit, they're marking me because they have something that's going to fight me and kill me. Better keep this back before it dies from it. it it's kind of like the the false flares that the major can do. If the enemy knows, like you're calling BS, then yeah, it's not gonna work. But if they don't, which is a lot of the time, oh boy. You could be playing mind games with them, and the mind games in CH2 is the best thing you can do against the enemy. Similar to like a chat spam or something like that, where it's just you distract your enemy, you cause them to rage, stuff like that. There's little methods you can do to just like cause your enemy to get off balance more so than just normal gameplay. Um, but in any case, let's get to it, shall we? Conscripts laying down some tripwire, uh, trip, there, there, there. Tripwire mines. I can't talk today. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. Anyway. So the reason why is when the uh, enemy comes near that place, fires up a flare into the air and it reveals everything in around like this scope of the map. Why? Well, why you do that? Well, simple. That way you can see the enemy coming around and you can counter it. Speaking of which, what do we have here? So we have the Soviet combined arms, which once again, <laughs> we bring up some more guards, which... I mean, I, it's, it's fine. So we have guard troops coming out, along with a nice recon, which will be good for the howitzers, and also the uh, IL-2 bomb strike to hit enemy artillery positions. Do we have enemy artillery? Uh, no, we actually have a Tiger, we have a Command Tank, and also we have a Yag Tiger. So overall, the Axis are really focusing on making sure they provide a really solid armor game. Um, Combine that with the recon and fragmentation bombs that they have, at, and also the flares, which are can be really good recon as well, because you can't shoot it down. Um, yeah, they, they could really be start doing a lot of damage to the Soviets. And right now with their army, I can see that exact thing happening. Mortar sorry, Stuka all the way back there, barely missing the mortar, which sucks, but it did force the conscripts out of play and kind of open them out. Uh, Panzer IV taking some heat, but looks like it should be fine. Until a 234-85 enters the field of battle. Pack gun. Oh boy, you better move on up. We also have a Zis uh, 376 coming up. The 76 is pretty good. Um, that thing went pull back armor. And yeah, you combine that with the T-3045 and that Panzer IV doesn't stand a chance. Nice job with the Panzer Faust and five star Volk squads. Oh, boy, that those conscripts are gonna die real quick. Um, nice amount of cocktail. He's pushing them back. Oh, that sucks. The heavy mortar just knocking it out on retreat. Oh, man. It's like, we're alive. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, Stuka bomb right here would be pretty good. Knock out all the support weaponry. Trees are flying into the air. Sure, why not? Company Heroes 2 for you, guys. Company Heroes 2 for you. Physics galore. I really hope they add that in Company Heroes 3. Whatever the physics are, I just hope they just have that, like, ragdoll effect. I know a lot of games are like, we must be it. We must be serious. We must be on point. But then I, like, Funhouse has been doing, like, uh, Hitman contracts. Like, a series on that. And those guys are always hilarious with their Hitman stuff. Um, but anyway, case. The, when, they, the, when they shoot a body, the body just starts the flailing around. Kind of similar to, like, Halo 3, where it's like, if you punched a body, it would go flying a little bit. Like, I, does it make sense? No. Is it realistic? No. Is it goddamn hilarious? Absolutely. freaking uh, Another game that comes to mind, and I know this game might be, like, too old for a lot of people, but goddamn Turok on the 360. Goddamn, that had amazing ragdoll physics. Uh, especially for, like, the, the dinosaurs in it. Because you would literally, like, punch a dinosaur and that, that thing would go flying. It, it was great. Now, anyway, nice grenade and also MG. Uh, currently keeping out all those units in. Looks like we... Oh, Jesus Christ. God damn, the Germans just can't catch a break today. Those heavy mortars are doing work. 19 kills, respectively. Yeah, it's definitely a good counter. I get all those heavy mortars to counteract a lot of the German infantry because very easy for them to get just uh, blown up. But I digress. Uh, the Allies are still in a bit of a pickle because, yeah, sure, they finally got two command points and they're winning right now let's double check overall numbers and maybe we'll see why exactly 73 38 and 
Oh my god. 500. Why don't you mark target? Jesus Christ. Ollie, you better be mining up the entire eastern seaboard. My god, you have so many mines. You better be, you better place so many mines down that it gives the Germans a run for their money about how many mines they placed in, like, uh, Belgium and the Netherlands in that region. Yeah. Fun fact, if you want to hear horror stories, you watch, uh, after the war, the German soldiers that had to clear the mines of the, uh, all, from all the ones they placed along the, uh, Atl along the Atlantic. That's a horror story right there, because they placed, like, goddamn large amount of mines. Anyway, T-34-85, rolling on up. I think they, they I, I remember that because of the movie. I forget the title of it. But anyway, T-30-45 rolling up. Panzer Forge is trying to hold them back. Oh, boy. I see AT grenades in your future. Mark target as well, doing a little more damage. Pack gun on standby. We'll do a bit of damage, but unfortunately not a ton. We need a little more firepower. Looks like we have artillery come down and breaking up that bunker. Oh, we have panzer grenades here, so that can be somewhat effective, but I, I feel like if they want to be infantry effective, like in a previous replay, you need to make sure that you don't get the upgrade. Otherwise, if you do that, you should be fine. But anyway, that artillery coming in. We also have an SU-85 here, which is definitely going to help counteract the placements. We have this. By the way, I love this. So we, he's building a howitzer, and he's making sure, like, again, you have this heavy cover to make it, you know, better protected and whatnot, which is fine, which is all dandy. Um, it will make it a little better for like strikes coming in because once again, if the if the uh, if I'm sorry, let me when the strike comes in or like shots fired, the barrier will provide some defense. Also, it's weird how hold on, it's weird how it's in negative cover and yet it's completely surrounded by heavy cover. So just a just a weird little remark right there about this thing. But otherwise, I feel like this thing could be pretty damn good. Especially at hammering mid, if they can just keep this thing going. But that being said, that's also keeping it protected. Right now, we do know the enemy has a fragmentation bomb that could decrew this thing. And you can say, Great Shot doesn't kill it. You're right, but removing its veterancy is uh, the next best thing. And enough frag bombs would eventually hurt it. Panzer 4 on standby. Panzer Grandier is also moving on up. We have a nice defensive line over here. And looks like the Germans could very easily push back. We do have more mines, I'm seeing. Uh, that could be very good. So, you know, at least someone's using munitions. Um, Obel Sedan moving on up. Most likely this is a special operations guy. With, you can definitely see it because he got the upgrade for the Obel Sedan, which tears apart infantry. So, yeah. If that thing gets behind enemy lines or starts fighting some recruit conscripts, it's going to be like, oh, God. It, they're just going to start eating. A half track right there as well, which actually, come to think of it, that's not a bad idea to have that thing there because, yeah, all the allied planes are flying overhead. Might be good to have that thing when it's not fighting infantry, shoot down those planes. Conscripts rolling on up. I'm guessing an AT grenade is in the future. Oh, God. That's... Oh, man. SU-85 getting a nice hit. Just knocking that thing out. Army-wise, let's see. We have 89, 58. So, mid-70s and probably low 70s at this point. Um, let's see. We have MILF, them, in the upper 40s with that. So, overall, I would say, like, probably, like, low 50s? Which, yeah, allies definitely have advantage right now. But that being said, the Germans had enough time to, like, build up and kind of get enough in terms of overall resources that I think they should relatively be fine. They have lost a lot of Panzer IVs. I'm sorry, they have, sorry, lost a lot of armor. And uh, they have slowly been pushed back. And the infantry, they have taken quite a number of casualties. But the thing that they can turn the tide of is the heavier stuff. Of the Yag Tigers, I'm thinking of specifically with the command tank. You add that with a Tiger, and you have a great trio of heavy armor that can literally start wrecking a lot of this. Also, why are you grouping up? You know the enemy has heavy mortars. Just hypothetically speaking, having them, oh, I don't know, group up? Not, maybe not a good idea. Half track on standby, hoping reinforce. They also have an AA gun on standby to shoot down enemy planes. Not a bad idea, because you could technically shoot down the recon plane and the fragmentation bomb. Um, before it really does uh, major damage. That being said, it could also crash land on your troops, which would be hilarious. But we'll see how things go. S-285 really not doing a ton of damage. From the mo what, what's really trying to do is just spot stuff, my assumption, for enemy mortars. Or, sorry, for, not enemy, for allied mortars. 
really just come down to hammering it. MG as well to also start picking those off those guys. Panzer IV come up and be like, I'm going to help out. And realizing, oh, wait, there's an SQD5 there. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just stay back. Down south is the one where, like, I'm very curious why this guy isn't making a move. Because you figure he wants to move up, close this area off, or flank this area. And, again, if you're worried about mines, minesweeper. But, uh... Yeah, it's just like, I'm, I'm I'm curious about that. This guy's pushing up. Oh, I see a great... I, I Oh, damn it. I was going to say a great opportunity to just run a bunch of guys over. Because fun fact, if they're next to an obstacle or like a major building or something, oh boy, you can just easily run them over. Nice mortar hit, by the way. Oh, let's see. 32 kills with that heavy mortar. Hmm. I wonder if it's doing work. Oh, wait, I think it is. 15 as well. Man, Stern Pioneers, unfortunately, have to pull back. We have artillery coming down in that position now. And again, we also have to chalk some of it up to the 152. So, give it that. We have a push going on left for the last some mines to kind of stop them. And also, I think the T-3045. Oh, are they going to hit the mine? Wait, is that their mine? Hold on. Yeah, it's, it's actually an OKW mine. It, yep. Sorry, I'm thinking of... The, yeah, you can definitely see the difference. Okay, W. Soviet. So we got plane overhead. We don't have any AA that they can... Oh, wait, no, we do. We have this. So where's it going to crash? Oh, there it is. Man, I have... I, I, I just know where it's going to go down. It, it's just, you know, I'm psychic like that. Speaking of which, we got a Yag Tiger moving on up. And this could be a huge issue for... The axe uh, for the allies. It also can be an issue for the axes. Let me explain. So, here's my rationale. If the axes can use this defensively and actually hold off a lot of that armor and try to pick it off, it can be very good. The problem for this thing is comes to the fact of the mark target. If the enemy is good at mark using mark target, then the Yag Tiger essentially loses its armor bonus. It uses that defensive play that makes it so freaking good. And with that. If you're not as good, and you can't take as many shots, and there's S-85s and T-30-45s, especially because, again, they're not normal T-34s, they have the 85mm gun, which makes them especially deadly, are going to do a ton of damage versus this thing. Also, the artillery could do a lot of damage versus this thing. The guard troops could pin this thing and do a lot of damage toward it. There's all sorts of things that could happen. It has been marked targeted, so we'll see how things go. Uh, unfortunately, the s 85 got a nice shot on it, so it's going to pull back that one as well. Oh, they have flares going out. That's why they're able to see all that armor. Unfortunately, they can't get the final shot in. Conscripts on standby throwing some AT grenades, but just not enough to really cause any substantial or critical damage. Panzer IV on standby trying to push them back. Right now, they need a lot more anti-infantry, but I think the Obel Sudan from around the corner could just start tearing them up from behind. So we'll see how well that does. Malta Cocktail. Wow, actually going to get a nice hit on most of the guys back here. Good job of pushing them back. Obel Sudan just can't find them with kills. I get what he's trying to do. Kind of use that cover um, or at least that maybe that was the original idea but he's like oh, I have to pull back a little bit good hit also done up to two stars a lot of artillery coming down Jesus Christ we have the 120s we have the Katusha we have the 152 and you're walking right into that grenadiers you're walking right into it what's your why now you have the Zis 70 uh, Zis 3 now also opening fire with its own artillery ability uh, even with all that said and done, Germans are still trying to press on up and take back mid. I haven't done anything yet, but MILF has more than enough uh, artillery flares to drop so we can keep providing recon, which should allow the Yag Tiger, which should probably move on up, especially with Fog of War, easily allowing the S-85 to be visible and a perfect target to open fire. Meanwhile, T-34 is on standby. My assumption is they're waiting for a flank of some type or waiting for a good opportunity to strike. Uh, right now, we have a big blob over here. Not really much defending it, so I can easily see uh, the T-34s rolling them down. Conscripts coming on up with the DPSHs, which makes them very deadly at close range, but supported by the half-track, pushing them back. Stuka Bombs coming in, and... Woo! That was a good hit. That was a really, really good hit. All right, so what'd that do? That hurt the Katusha, and that knocked out one of their artillery pieces. The one over here by heavy cover, it's still doing pretty well, enough to 10 kills, but at least the Stuka, which I believe is yours, right? Yeah, got a bit of damage on it. Let me make sure that wasn't someone else's Stuka. 
Nope, nope, and yeah, you didn't somehow take a Stuka. So we're clear. We're good. You'd be surprised. I've seen, there was one game where I'm like, oh, of course it was this guy. And it turns out, nope, it wasn't him. It turned out it was actually a guy who got the Stuka decrewed and their ally got it. Like, for example, with my B4, when it gets decreed, I'm like, hey, who who wants the uh, artillery piece? Who wants it? Because, again, it's just like I, I I would rather build my own and allow someone else to have it than take it my own, take it myself on a front that I'm not really focusing on because they would have better insight and better timing on hits more so than me who is really focusing on somewhere else. That's the one thing about coming if you're just two people forget. It's like you have your lane and you can't support others, but your reaction time is going to be slower on others because you're not you're not focusing entirely on that one front also don pulling on back because of the close range two show which uh, did a little bit of damage but luckily he was able to pull out before anything substantial happened it also looks like you have a tiger being deployed so right now all we're missing is the command tank to really make this happen and right now but judging by the uh, this guy's definitely saving up a decent amount of manpower that and fuel that he could probably get it within the next like minute or so Panzer 4 on standby, just trying to push that thing back. That can actually provide some helpful uh, bonuses for the armor here, because that would increase their range uh, slightly, or at least their physical range, so that could help with the Yag Tiger being able to snipe some more forces about the constant need for artillery flares. I will say, him using constant artillery flares to help the Yag is very helpful, if they can get close enough. Unfortunately, right now, we have this AT gun that is quite annoying. Why are you presenting yourself to the Yag Tiger? Luckily, the Yag Tiger did retreat. Um, AT gun barely out of range for the Stuka. The SWD5, I think, can fire a shot if it wanted to. But now it's going to focus on the Panzer IV. Knocked out the mortar crew. And not much else. But hey, I'll, you know, take the mortar crew. That's fine. T3045 just hanging in there. Trying to provide a nice flanking opportunity. Hit the mark targeted Tiger. Oh, that's a good hit. And there goes the AT34. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, that 84. Five, say. I'm gonna say it's 85. Hold on, let me double check the side. Uh, yes, I'm gonna say 85. So that's a that's what 130. Hold on. Yeah, about 130 fuel. So that's not bad. That's not a bad loss. Now they have to start taking out these T34s too. They may be 76s and weaker, but still, you take. Uh, they're still providing a heck of a. Well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're causing a bit of a good playing it, a uh, bit of havoc on your other side. So you're gonna probably need some forces over here. Who's gonna? Who's over here again? It's it's blue, and blue has what exactly? He has the Yag in mid, but he has no additional armor to guard his flank. Okay, so yeah, he's gonna need other allied or I guess other. Uh, he he needs his teammates' support to come on up and really push them back. So that's the problem with sending a unit to go help in mid. Is right now you're kind of focused elsewhere. A lot of things like. Could be useful, but it's like, nah, yeah, I kind of need to focus on my other front for capturing this point. Which is also weird, he keeps trying to push for over here, because these guys are so heavily fortified, that this guy seems to probably want to go more defensive, if I was him. All you need to do is kind of defend, like, this area, like, this point. Maybe take this, but, like, that man point back is so heavily defended, that I would rather, like, you focus more effort in capturing mid. Because then you can kind of link up with yellow on the right and do a lot of damage over here. Because he has nothing, nothing contesting him down this way. Which would be good with if he can kind of group that up with his Ops and and push for a flank. At the same time, you guys all push mid. And yeah, just let the Stuka really do most of the damage. Which, by the way, nice hit all around. Uh, I got to bet one, but hey, it's almost at bet two. Uh, unfortunately, the Howitzer now is, uh, well, is... It has, eight, it has 18 kills and looks like three vehicles somehow. Nice artillery shots on the Tiger and everything. Oh, and nice hit on the MG. That poor guy. He's like, I, I finally get to use it! And he just gets blown up. Oh, well. Artillery's coming in. Mostly it's just really peppering the area. Right now, the Germans need to, like a major counterattack. They need something to dislodge the Allies and really allow them to win. But what can they do? Well, first off, not sacrificing their guys into oblivion would help. Um, secondly, don't they have the mechan- Okay, they do. Oh, he he doesn't have the upgrade form. Yeah, that would help. A Suka could be good to counteract a lot of the artillery they have. 
Uh, right now, let's see, we have a flank and come right in. That did a little bit of damage, not as much as I would like. Katusha actually hitting their own men a little bit. Yeah, that, that should have caused a bit more damage. I like how it's like, yeah, we actually hurt the mortar. It's like, no, the mortar crew was barely alive from the Katusha, and we got a few kills because the fact they were barely alive from the Katusha hit. Yeah. One of those scenarios where it's like, we got credit. It's like, yeah, but did you really deserve it? So. The T-34-85 has rolled onto the field, scaring Yubel Sedan. And Cervix Rake has come on in and just been like, hey, Yubel Sedan, you should run now. All right, we still have the IL-2 bomb strike that I have not seen. We also have a bunch of Katushas. Hold on. We have three Katushas. Four, we have four goddamn Katushas, plus all the howitzers. Which now we have two. So that's a lot of artillery currently hitting the Germans. I mean, they're gonna, unfortunately, with their armor, just not being able to really crack the Soviets. More so from lack of effective engagements, more so than lack of effective armor. Like, you combine the Yag Tiger and the Tiger, and you got yourself a pretty good combo. Oh, he went for a King Tiger as well. Okay. So you have a King, a Yag, and, uh,. We have, well, sorry, a tiger, a king, and a yag walk into a bar with a Soviet bartender. Uh, Capture the point finally, but unfortunately forced to retreat. Yag tiger getting a beautiful shot on that T-34. This is what I'm talking about. Have the yag plus additional infantry. You need the infantry. Obel Sodan. Get the Obel Sodan. Which, by the way, unfortunately, this thing is now being artillery. So, as you can see by the uh, possessed men, an artillery shell killed some Obel Sodan, so we had to re reposition his guys. But have the king kind of focus here. Have some infantry also assist. The king can focus on the infantry and taking shots. Because goddamn, that front armor on the king is great. And then move your yag up and help. But right now I see I see a lot of potential. But a lack of coordination. A lot of effective coordination uh, would have uh, really helped out to kind of push back all this armor. That's really just on standby. But at least... Again, right now, the king is doing what it can by itself. Tiger's now coming up. Yag Tiger's, like, uh, I guess finally woke up from his drunk fender. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to help out. Because the SU-85 should not be able to fire on that king out of pose. But, no, that's exactly what it's doing right now. That's exactly what it's doing. They did just button that vehicle. I'm assuming we have an IL-2 bomb strike coming in on it. So, he's not going to have any idea about it. And we're going to see a uh, big boom back to There we go. Great shot. How did you know it was an IL-2? Oh, it's simple. It's literally, they dropped it right on the tank. If it was Sturmovic, they would have dropped it on the infantry. Artillery doing a nice couple of shots, knocking out its main gun. Will the last random shot from the artillery neutralize it? Or will a random SU-85 get a snipe shot on it? Nice artillery shot on the... I love how this game, this is literally the game of like, the infantry is like retreating and they just get the one extra FU. From the, art, from the unit just being hit. Uh, Stern Pioneers really should not be focusing on healing, because I know it's like, hey, we're healing. We can heal really quick. A fair point, but you're also healing while under fire. And that Sturm, uh, Sturm, that Panzer Shrek would probably be very good against that armor right now. Or fighting, or the close-range guns would be pretty good to fight off the, uh, the engineer squad. But no, you just end up dying, because again, they're more vulnerable during that time frame. Stuka coming in, but unfortunately kind of missing most of it. And the allies get through, get out of there just fine while the Axis lost the Tiger tank. Again, it's just like, why? Also, why are you charging with a Panzer IV? You know they still have a ton of armor up here, right? You know that's still a thing. And like, this guy's SU-85 lib, Orange's armor. Oh wait, no, he lost an SU-85. Where did he lose the SU-85? Now, that's the T-34 he lost. Where did he lose that SU-85? Was it a plane crash? Lose on the right, maybe? No, this guy also has the T-34. It's just standing there. Just like, sure, why not? Panzer IV being pulled back. My tiger's over there. I don't know. Huh. Oh, this is, if, if the Katusha gets up by a Stuka bomb there, the mine's going to blow it up and pretty much that's going to kill it. Which would be hilarious. That was a good Stuka hit. Kind of hit across here. Did a lot of damage versus all the armor. And stopped them from repairing a lot of this stuff. So, that was a good hit. I'm surprised that they don't hit this. 
but by the amount of, uh, well, the fact they're remanning that is that my assumption that they were hit by some type of Stuka bomb, but it survived. So, anyway, artillery is currently coming down there because my assumption would be they think that the vehicles would retreat to this point, and that way they could get a lucky kill with the howitzer on the vehicles. Not a bad idea. But unfortunately, the, the, the axes were like, no, we're going to push them over to the left and just uh, have them over there. Oh, so Don charging back up. Great infantry. Unfortunately, just with all the artillery, it's just every time they think they can push up or do a decent amount of damage, they just get taken out. Now, Obus Sudan should easily be able to knock out these conscripts because conscripts first thing. Elite Obus Sudan, not a problem. Bring an artillery into the mix, they're going to have some issues. Really? Throwing a bundle grenade against conscripts? Alright, Yag Tiger, come on. You are the, one of the best tank destroyers in the game. Show the world how awesome you are and just get down there and start laying waste to the allies. Come on. Allies on the right hand side pushing on up with conscripts. Unfortunately, this guy is, except for one Panzerful Slayer Squad, which is really damn good. Uh, it's just having a lot of problems with them. Oh boy. Just being torn apart. Trying to rush on up and kill the Sturm Officer, not a bad idea. But fortunately, just too many men, they're gonna fall back. Katusha getting a nice hit though. Looks like they were able to get some recon and we're able to spot where all their arm it's their armor. Where, well, yeah, the armor's being killed and all the infantry were. Oh, that's a great hit on that. Um on that grand Panzer Grenadier squad. Barely alive. Should be able to heal, but barely alive, so it's gonna take some time. There I don't under like this guy's so heavily defended over here. I don't know why you keep pushing. It's literally into the meat grinder you go. So many men dying for so low reason. Great job on that front. Just for just wonderful. T34 is rolling up. Slowly beating them back. Yes, yeah, some of the heavy mortar. Really? The gag comes over here? Where's the armor support? Where's the infantry support? You have none. Even the king and tiger, like, where the fuck is our gag support to fight off these SU-85? Yag's like, don't worry, guys. I got the T-34. It's the biggest threat in this game. It's like, Jesus Christ. They're literally pushing down there. And what do you have? Nothing. You have nothing to show for. You even killed the T-34s. They're still alive. They just got pushed back. Yag, finally get some shots on them. My God. Just, please. Please. Beautiful. All right. Now, just do that again and again and again. Especially because they're vet, too. Play some flares. Have the king. Do some work. Oh, wow. He's used so many goddamn artillery flares. I feel bad for Milf. Because, again, it's like... He's like... They're recon, you can see them! And the Yag's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's like goddamn Krendor. Like, what is it, guys? You know. I think that everything's gonna be just a, just a good day. Just a great day. Anyway, gets uh, beaten back. And, uh,. God damn. Also, highly recommend Cox Cro and Crendor because, god damn, just like Cre with Jesse's craziness and Cr and uh, Crendor's kind of like lax, kind of lazy attitude, it j that even just or just watch the animated stuff that they posted. It also pretty good. Idea. There was a good one with Nicholas Cage in it if that gets your attention. Anyway, Yag not being used at its potential at all. Like, god damn. That was a good Stuka. Holy God, that was a good Stuka. Got a nice number of infantry kills. At least trying to hold him back. Trying to do something. Unfortunately, they're, the Katushas and everything just been pounding the axes for way too long. So much so that this guy can no longer hold back one conscript squad from his southern point, which is sad. Because you figure he should be able to. Um, he should be able to send up with Sudan, but, you know, they're having some issues with in casualties. Now he should probably put a medical here so he can heal. And he, now he's a retreat point, but I guarantee you once they find that, artillery's gonna start raining down on them. So that'll be a problem. Yag being marked targeted. 
recon going up. He's hitting our entire area. Yag just now like, okay, I'll fight mid. Great, it, fi it fired on the king. This is where the king comes in to handle because he can take those shots. Unfortunately, because of the bombs, and artillery, and everything else coming down this region, that uh, Yag needs to pull back. And beautiful hit from the howitzer knocked it out. Again, the howitzer, MVP of this game. How many vehicle kills again? Four. Four vehicles have been blown up by this thing. MVP by far. Like, goddamn. Oh, plane crash in the distance. Just, just beautiful. But, yeah, it's not much you can really do in this scenario, unfortunately. Looks like the Axes are definitely going to lose this turn. And it's, it's, it's sad because they had the tools. They had the means. They just... Uh, one guy was like, use my recon. And the guy with the weapon was like, I, wait, what? The one guy with all the infantry was like, I'll keep brushing them against the meat grinder. It's like, no, can you, fo can you focus not there? And he's like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna only focus my infantry there. The guy that had all the infantry on the flank was like, I could lock this area down with mines. Or not. Nah, I'm not going to do that. It, I get they each had like, the, they each had the piece of the puzzle, but they just couldn't connect and it just they when it when they ended up making it said it was a horrible horrible mess of a game now on that note with artillery coming down that oh my god the stuka it's god damn it with artillery coming down there yeah that the, the axis lost well let's double check overall day for goddamn yag tiger god damn you didn't even it's like really really you only got thirty two thousand. your yag tiger did us eleven thousand. oh great amazing guess what Hold on. Let me double check the best allied player real quick. A testy Soviet. Testy Soviet, which, by the way, had the T-34s. God damn. The, the howitzer. The howitzer did more damage than the goddamn Yag. For shame. For shame. Anyway, 218 kills for him as well. Goddamn. Most kills and most damage. Um, so good job on that front. Uh, Milf, goddamn. You, again, did rather well on kills. 217. Uh, just unfortunately, you guys just didn't do enough damage to the allies. The allies were just arting you to death. And that, unfortunately, that's what happens when you just can't effectively push or coordinate your tactics to really lay an effective strike. It's just these half-attempt measures. It's like, do just work together and you guys can do this. But no, we didn't really get that. In any case, that's game one. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. This has been Great Shot 1-7. I'll see you all next time. Hello everyone, and before I go, I want to give a special shout out to Joey, Ace, Lobo, Leo, Nick, and Tim. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support. You guys rock and help me do what I do. So thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.